गुड आफ्टरनून व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू दिस टेलीकम डेस्ट ऑफ द स्कूल ऑफ सोशल साइंसेस टूडे टॉपिक इज ऑन गाइडलाइंस फॉर पी जी लैंड एंड एम एल एस प्रोजेक्ट दिस टू आर द इम्पॉर्टेंट कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ द कोर कोर्स ऑफ द प्रोग्राम सो वी हैव विथ अस डॉक्टर जयदीप शर्मा हु हैज बीन कोआर्डिनेटिंग दिस पी जी लैंड प्रोग्राम एंड टू ऑफ एम एल एस कोर्सेस which compresses research methodology also so it gives you a clear idea about the projects how to prepare a proposal how to submit these guidelines so we thought of having a session which can be very helpful to the students of pg land and mlas also so today we have with us dr jaydeep sharma who can give the clear idea about the projects so now i request dr jaydeep sharma to take over the presentation thank you mr sevukan <coughs> uh, dear friends uh, the day before was the last day to submit the pgd land project proposal and we had received quite a uh, large number of proposals and we have also been receiving project proposals for our mlis and by going through these proposals we found that still our students are not very clear about this project component that we have introduced in the masters degree this year and the pgd land program 3 uh, years back we had sessions earlier also but we thought that it's better at this particular moment to have one more session because our students have been in the process of Uh, finalizing their synopsis and they are just to start or begin with their project reports this particular session will be discussing about all the different aspects not only the uh, synopsis but also your project report so uh, everything from the beginning to the end will be discussing and particularly with a view of the problems and difficulties that our students have been facing we start with some very basic things about the project and uh, most of these things you might be knowing also but still we find that at times our students are in confusion so we thought that first of all we would like to tell you that this project uh, report or project is uh, like any other course that means it is a course for 100 marks you have to devote 120 hours for the four credits that are devoted to this particular course the name for the the code for this course as you all know is MLIP 008 for PG DLAN and MLIP 002 for MLIS and before uh, telling you anything else uh, i would also like to remind you dear friends that we have issued project guides both for PG DLAN as well as MLIS and we have taken utmost care to include the very basic things to the final uh, that would you would like to know from your uh, from us as well as from your guides so you please go through these uh, guides very carefully before you start working on your project and if you see these guides the very first thing that you Uh, find here is that for doing this project you need to have one more person with you and this person will be the supervisor who is going to guide you throughout this project now the uh, very first thing that is doubtful at times for our students is who can be a project guide or the sub project supervisor whom you have to select and again if you see your project guides we have very clearly spelled out that the guide or supervisor can be anyone who is a phd or a phd in library information science or mtech in computer science or even it could be a be btech in computer science or mca msc in computer science or mlis with at least 2 years of experience particularly for pgd lane if you see it has to be it based experience but in case if it is for mls project it can be experience of working in a recognized library so this has to be very clear first of all to you this is the minimum qualifications that the person should have and other than that 
uh, another important thing about your guide or supervisor is the is that you should choose a person as guide or supervisor with whom you can go and get along well with whom you have a good understanding repo with whom you have access to and it is the person of your choice or liking because you have to be working with the person right from the beginning to the end of the project the person is not going to do the work for you but as it is clear from the term itself the person has to guide you along uh, right through the project so you choose one such person and this is uh, generally asked by our students also sir who can we have as guide so i thought of devoting some time to this particular aspect also our uh, students have been in a little difficulty because they have not yet uh, earlier done any such project in their earlier studies so i thought it is better it is appropriate to first of all tell what is this project it is a bit different from the other courses so uh, if we try to define it it is uh, an application of what you have learned in the different courses it is a practical demonstration of your knowledge and skills it provides you a platform of showing what you have learned of putting your dreams into reality of uh, uh, trying to uh, sh uh, trying to put into uh, picture of uh, the different pieces of knowledge that you have gained through in the different courses so uh, this is in fact a platform that you can use and utilize well and have confidence later on that you have really Uh, learned you have really imbibed you have really been able to utilize your knowledge and skills that we have tried to give to you so it's a advantage for the learners that they have a chance to work on the project now why this project why should we really have a project as i have been telling you it helps you to translate your knowledge and skills into reality giving them a practical shape you are uh, because further once you have done your these degrees or diploma uh, finally what for you are doing it you are to enter into this profession so this is a step towards entering the profession this helps you to uh, work do well in your profession later on and further it also helps you to evaluate yourself what you have learned how much you have learned you have you really gained what was supposed to be gained by you so as i told you earlier also it is an advantage doing a project uh, in this particular program now the if you go further and try to uh, see that uh, after doing this project what you are going to gain if we try to uh, just think ponder over what are the objectives of this project uh, if we start from a particular point where we are going to be led into the if you just see this particular slide that the objectives of this project is to prepare you to undertake research in future so you might be wondering why only to prepare for research in the future is it not a research Uh, it is a sort of a mini research it is a sort of a step towards research so here you have to learn what is research how research is do done what is the research methodology uh, what are the areas that are liable for research uh, that gives you a beginning to that 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 is a sort of a training towards research and it also enables you to perceive application of uh, ICT in library and information work and services you might be wondering why we are so much stressing on ICT because dear friends you know that this is a phenomena in our profession these days you cannot think of uh, uh, without ICT therefore this is one of the objectives and it also and uh, one another objective is that it also enables you to visualize um, new services and products we can further go and say that it also helps us to study and know the existing systems and services uh, that are there today 
and we can further act, uh, made my, make an extension into what is existing we are able, we may add to all these that are existing we we just don't think that we'll be able to create something new but it will be a step towards that we'll be able to learn after having knowing what exists we'll be able to critically analyze and give our suggestions for improvements here and there it is in fact what we have done theoretically to really see that practically happening and also make that happen in some way so this is uh, the objective of a project now if we go further about uh, knowing how to really go about doing this project there are a number of stages in this project and the stages are that first of all we think of a uh, topic where we can work on and uh, then after we have thought of that topic i'll uh, discuss each of these points one by one just while, while you are going through this slide you see that first of all we think of a topic then we formulate a proposal then undertake the project as per proposal and then finally prepare the project report and submit now let us uh, discuss uh, these one by one like uh, think of a topic that is uh, looks to be very simple but it is uh, a little difficult that how do we think a topic uh, whether this can be a topic for our work or not uh, if you see this particular slide this slide helps you in knowing whether a, a topic can be topic for your project or not like for example if your topic is an analysis or critical study of an existing system operation or service it can be a topic for your project if it is concerned with designing a system or operation or service though uh, it is on a small scale then also it can be a topic i would like to caution you here that please see that what you are doing is just not a description of your uh, different operation systems services it has to be something beyond that and though it has to be part of it but it should not be merely a description and for pgd land particularly you take care that if it is a work that enables you to work practically with technology it would be better and why we are stressing this for pgd land because you know that in all these seven courses that you are working in pgd land you have practical components and that gives you a uh, a platform that you are uh, able to design some services you are able to produce some contents you uh, that way uh, if it is but if it is a technology based project it is better you are practically uh, doing some such thing that will help you uh, therefore it is better for pgd land that it is a practical work now the next point that we were discussing was that uh, uh, whether it can be a topic or not that after uh, thinking of the topic you have to formulate a proposal the project proposal that the people are in the process of doing these days and uh, we have uh, reviewed a number of proposals and we found a number of things missing in the proposals and that is why some of these proposals have been rejected some have been sent back with uh, modifications suggested modifications and the students are getting back to us they are still in doubts why certain uh, project proposals have been rejected uh you as you might have seen the printed forms that we give you the first thing that you have to adhere to is that you submit your proposal in a proper shape that is why we have designed a uh, printed form uh, to be attached along with your proposal in some of the proposals we have seen that that form itself is missing so the very first thing is that you please see your project guide and see what all details have to be attached in your project proposal and uh, you strictly adhere to that so some of these synopses have been rejected just because of this very basic reason another reason why some proposals have been rejected is that they have not uh, attached the details of their guide or some of those who have attached the details they have not attached the consent letter of their guide there is another uh, printed performa for that even if it is not that printed performa at least a letter on the pad of your guide that the guide is ready to guide you for this project so in some of the cases we have seen that this is missing and that is why they have been asked to submit this in proper form 
and it has been uh, strictly written also there then why some of the projects have been rejected another reason for that is that and this is generally true for most of them is that they have not very clearly presented their uh, proposal like for example the very first thing that has to be kept in mind is that your title should be very clear it should tell uh, right from looking at the title one should have almost more than 50 percent of the idea that what and how you are going to do rest of the things uh, while going through your synopsis one should be able to have an idea so at times the topics are such are so general are so vague that it is not appropriate to have some such topic if the topic is appropriate if we further go into the synopsis we find that uh, that this uh, the topic that has been suggested is uh, not put in a proper shape and here again the uh, thing that is most lacking is the objectives part of your synopsis see my dear friends that objectives are the objectives of your uh, project so again we find that the objectives that are given are very general objectives are like where from you are going to start and where you are going to end again it has to be very clearly presented that this project uh, will start from here go to here that means this is what you want to achieve out of your project so again it has to be very clearly stated while stating the objectives we find at times these things are missing in your objectives then when you come to the methodology here again you have to very clearly state how you are going to achieve these objectives you should not miss any particular point again we find that in the methodology also the people have very generally stated the methodology at times even as points only no it is not proper the reason uh, what we gather is that why people have done it like this is they have not devoted proper time on this synopsis see synopsis is one of the most important components of your project it is uh, generally believed that a well planned and designed synopsis is almost half of your work done if your synopsis is not well planned and designed you are going to be in trouble later on so it is better that some modifications are suggested or it is rejected at least you get a chance to work again on it you get a chance to improve upon it so that further it helps you in your project later on so please take care of these things though we have not uh, been very critical or very severe on these at times the bibliography and other things are not very properly put uh, so we have uh, not uh, taken these things uh, into view we have uh, cleared such synopsis but this is an important part of all these that you state your limitations you provide a proper chapterization in your synopsis so it actually helps you if you have done that very well so this is uh, what i wanted to tell you about your synopsis again if uh, uh, at times there has been constant demand from our use our uh, students that you please tell us what can be some topics so uh, regarding that uh, you please if you go through this slide you will find find that we have thought of some topics that can be possible topics for your project like uh, you see here automation of circulation section of a library see at times we find that people are taking automation but they are taking in total whole i think uh, we think that it will not be possible for you at this stage so it is better you take one or two modules maximum like circulation section serials control or even two modules or so so that way you will be able to get a chance to work on some such modules you choose some softwares to which you have access to you create some records there uh, pr produce some databases uh, and generate some reports that gives you the confidence of working in that uh, software and also developing some product out of it similarly developing a software module uh, that will that is also one of the topics that is possible you can create a module for like library cataloging or you can create a module for SDI in libraries 
another uh, suitable topic could be mining of information through search engines again it if you could be a little bit more specific about that that would be better similarly web page design for an organization if you are working in a library you can create one for your library or uh, you can choose some general area for which you can uh, create a web page but again you have to take care while you are creating a web page you uh, provide some links that could be useful for that particular organization it should not be very flat uh, that one should take care of similarly you can take a particular library software and do a critical study of the software but then critical study means that you have an expertise of working with some software so that you can suggest things and here and there if it is not full software you can do some detailed study of a module also you can choose some opex also in some softwares and you can evaluate those opex or you can generate a sdi bulletin for a library that is just creating a, a service for a library this is another possible topic web pages of organizations uh, earlier i told you about designing a web page here you can do a comparison also so this is another topic that could be of use to you so these are some of the topics that you could have taken uh, you can uh, also think of some such more topics like hosting a bibliography like bibliography if it is on the web you call it a bibliography so that is also possible you can to uh, take one such topic also or creating a web based information system or providing web enabled information services similarly you can take uh, think of some more topics like uh, uh, if you are thinking of some traditional topics you can do uh, study of some uh, uh, libraries but here don't take one library only uh, it is better you take comparative study of two libraries if you take one library it could be a public library system we have seen that at times our students have taken uh, one library only that to at a very small scale we have suggested that you please take at least two libraries see if you are doing a, a st study of library user study here again that study will be in two parts one will be a user survey the other will be the survey of the facilities system services operations that are being provided by the library and that way if you take two like libraries like uh, for example it could be two college libraries or two university libraries then uh, you could compare them so but uh, you please take care of this fact that they should not be very geographically far widespread it will be a little difficult for you and uh, the most important thing is that you should have access to those libraries so you have to request them first of all you have to ask them that we want to study your libraries if you get a response in the positive from them that you can take some such topic also or you can even prepare a trend report but if you are preparing a trend report you please take care that the subject that you are choosing is uh, uh, the current one it should not be old because see our purpose is that one is that we have to learn ourselves the other is that we have to give something for the professionals or this particular profession the product that we are creating could be of use like in if you think like that it could be also creating databases indexes in part, uh, some such particular useful areas which are current and this should be based on literature that is current that will also be a help to our uh, uh, users in our profession you find here some more such topics like library automation in an organization in a case study like uh, how they have done automation what were the problems that fa they faced if you do some such study that will be useful for some other organization that is just into the process of automating that will be helpful to them similarly i just now mentioned about bibliography here again i am referring that it could be web resources in a specific field that will be useful to researchers in that particular field but you please take care that you have interest in this field you have already earned some degree or you have some expertise so that you have created an interest similarly you can also uh, do a study of free online journals that are available because these days these are available in plenty you can do a study and uh, provide that uh, in a uh, form at one place that again would be useful to the researchers similarly uh, it could be automation of college libraries like in a particular geographical area so that will help you again 
to provide a uh, such study would be useful to the professionals uh, library or software packages a study again this again you are doing a compilation works or usage of e-resources in libraries it could be a user study how they what problems they are finding how they are using and utilizing these resources and this would be another useful study that you can take so these are some such topics which our users wanted now how to arrive at a topic this is another important thing because see we have suggested some topics but uh, it's not all it's not a comprehensive list you can have some more topics also some new topics also so how do we go about selecting a topic what are the uh, areas that help us so again for this I would like to give you some tips about how to arrive at a topic what are the uh, tools that help us at arriving a topic so if you see that I have uh, enumerated here the tips these are scan the literature or e-resources study existing systems procedures routines discuss with the guide or fellow learners and professionals now if we see this one by one because generally I have seen when students are in the process of thinking of a topic they generally rely on others that uh, is not proper that does not give you the confidence the best thing about uh, choosing a topic is that it should come from within it should come from you rather than coming from someone else because see not all topics are good for everyone a topic may be good for you may not be good for the other person so why 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 I'm saying that is that the very first thing and most important thing about choosing a topic is that it should be an area of interest to you so please while choosing a topic first of all you think yourself within from within it should come means that you think what are the areas that interest you and what are the areas that where you have the confidence this is the very first thing that you should so after that you have to think of the viability of the topic viability means whether it is possible at this stage to do or not whether it is possible for you to do within the resources that you have when you think of the resources resources means the literature that you have access to the uh, financial resources that are available with you the time resources that are available with you and your expertise also so it is these things matter a lot and after once you have thought of a particular area now you have to zero down it it might be a little broad you have to make it narrower so for making it narrower you scan literature here and there this literature may be print literature or it may be e-literature also so and that is available in plenty around you you may go and visit libraries you may uh, see the periodicals like Lisa is one library and information science abstracts you can go and see what sort of research people are doing you can even go and see primary periodicals you see what sort of areas people are working in and from there you get a cue that this is uh, an area that is of interest to me I would like to mold it like this so but at the same time keep in view the viability the resources that you have with you that is very important so this is one that going that is going to help you the other is this, this may be one you may add on to it the other things like for example after seeing this you go practically to the field see how people are doing these things how it is being done in libraries and mission centers don't just limit yourself to library information centers you can come out of these also like while designing services you can see how it is happening in other areas like your messaging services that you have these days on your mobiles so this is also one area that this is also one uh, thing that is happening around us and can give us a help we can also think of some such services and uh, do a survey or uh, study in this area also it can it just don't limit yourself to traditional sort of things that people are doing but at the same time while you are trying to deviate yourself from these traditional things you uh, consult your guide you 
may also it's not just necessary that you consult your guide you talk to anyone in the profession you talk about the viability you talk about the appropriateness of your topic and that gives you the confidence and uh, you can move further after this uh, and i told you that while you are scanning the literature you can also see how things are being done practically in libraries and information centers so this is uh, what i wanted to tell you about the tips now once you have thought of all this now you have to start working on the proposal now before you start working on the proposal i would just like to tell you about what is a proposal if you see this particular slide uh, you find that it is a step by step guide to what you are to do it is a blueprint of your project it is a map of your journey from visualization to completion of the project i would like to stress here that i told you i just now mentioned that it is a step by step guide of what you want to do step by step means that while you are stating you have do, do not have to miss you have to be uh, mentioning about your what why and how of your project in small steps so that wherever there is a doubt wherever there is a shortcoming you yourself are able to make it there is no one who is going to tell you that this is a problem that is why it has to be a step by step guide so after having known what is a proposal let us see how it has to be presented what is going to be the structure of our proposal if you see this particular slide again you find that we have mentioned here what is going to be the structure of your proposal it starts with your title the very first thing in your proposal will be your title then and as i told you earlier also the title has to be very crystal clear it has to be very crisp and uh, it should convey what you are supposed to do after your title comes the introduction introduction will provide a background to your study will also introduce your topic and then comes the objectives objectives have to be stated as points one after the other from general to specific and these tell the person who is seeing your proposal that you are what you are going to achieve out of this project then after this objectives comes the methodology and again i would like to point out here that in your methodology you very clearly specify what is going to be the input and after this input what are going to be the processes for converting this input to the output like for example if you are doing a technology based project you indicate the tools platforms and languages to be used after that comes your output what you are going to achieve out of it and then a tentative chapterization i use the word tentative because you may like to change here a little bit but uh, you provide a broad chapterization how you are going to chapterize your work and limitations limitations means what you are not going to do in this particular project limitations are always there but at times we tend to make certain things as limitations which are generally not so that is why uh, my next slide uh, would like to uh, point out here there are certain things that you should always remember while you sorry are sorry for the interruption yes please mr sevakon uh, sir actually we are talking about two programs yes pg land mlis yes yes uh, we have talked about the structure also yes is there any difference between the structure of these two programs yes uh, it's i'm really thankful to you for having pointed out here there is a slight difference though not exactly a very big difference because our mls course is also quite technology oriented but still uh, as he has pointed out very rightly pointed out that when, while uh, there is a little difference between a project that is traditional project and a technology based project so while you are presenting your methodology where in your traditional project like if you are doing a comparative study of services by two libraries there will not be any tools like that what i had mentioned there it would be when you are stating your methodology you will be telling about how you started like for example 
that you would uh, say that in your methodology that you started with selecting a sample of your population then uh, what was the basis of that sample if you are doing a sample study whether it was a random sample or it was a stratified sample that you used then you will tell about the tools that you used it could be questionnaires then uh, the mailed questionnaires or interviews then how many people uh, you did uh, you conducted your uh, administered your questionnaires differently what time did you do that and uh, how many responses uh, you uh, not responses here that will be in the analysis but uh, this will be the sample size and the tools that you use that all will be in your methodology I hope I am clear. Uh, yes, you are clear. So uh, this is the difference between a, a project that you do for your PGD LAN or MLIS or particularly when it is technology based or it is a little traditional. I again would like to uh, remind you when I was showing that slide that you have to remember that uh, while you are presenting whether it is a synopsis or even a project that you should be very clear, precise step by step in approach and state the truth even your limitations at times we try to hide these things that is going to affect our results and also the evaluation that is done uh, later so please be very clear about all these things then uh, there are some more important things that one should remember again I would like to point out here if you see this particular slide that uh, it is very important to manage your time uh, because you know uh, generally it so happens like I was telling you that day before yesterday it was the last date for the project's uh, proposal submission and generally we find our students uh, getting panicky so today is the last date can, is will it be extended so the, this is very usual of our students because they have not managed their time properly the very first day when you are uh, inducted into the course you are told that this project proposal has to be submitted by this date so you know how much time you have at your disposal so it is very important you manage your time properly and for managing your time properly you should prepare a work schedule preparing a work schedule will help you work schedule means you maintain a diary you note down that by this time or date you have to finish this by this date you have to finish this and that, that does not mean that you will be able to exactly do that but you try to stick to it and uh, you allocate your time to these different phases of your project that you are going to do like synopsis uh, again in your synopsis also you can uh, di uh, di di divide your time into the different phases of preparing the synopsis and while doing so you have regular interaction with your guide because why regular interaction with the guide because the guide is going to suggest you things here and there and for that also you should have time generally what is found is that our students go to the guide at the last moment he is not able to give the input so that is not proper and therefore you have to monitor your progress not only you but your guide also so once that is done now I will come to the project report so the synopsis has been submitted now once the synopsis is submitted uh, the project report has to be uh, prepared and for that again the things that I was mentioning earlier you keep that in mind and while submitting the project report you the very first thing that will come is that you have to have the title of the project and again the introduction objectives methodology as I told you earlier also the same things will come here also and after methodology then you will uh, come to the observation, analysis, findings, conclusion, bibliography, index and appendices. Uh, other things uh, are at quite clear but I would like to mention here that while you are presenting your uh, introduction you also prepare a uh, present a literature review, review of rele relevant literature because that provides a basis to your work and uh, you I would also like to mention here that while you are presenting your project report you have to have some initial pages like your acknowledgements and certificate all those are very standardized so this is the uh, format of the project report then there are some important dates that you have to remember and these dates are uh, different for PGD line as well as uh, MLIS and the dates for PGD line I would like to mention is that the submission of the proposal either by 30th April or 30th September because we are doing it in two cycles 
and uh, similarly if it is submitted by 30th april the approval or rejection you will be receiving maximum by 31st may or if it is submitted by 30th september it will be conveyed to you maximum by 31st october so and finally the report has to be submitted by 30th september in the first cycle or 31st march in the second cycle because we will having will be having term and examination twice a year therefore like that and once we have you have submitted the report the viva voice was will be connect, conducted again by the regional center or the tele learning center uh, either in january or july one month after that so uh, this is the schedule regarding pgd lan now i would like to mention about mlis and for mlis the proposal submission <coughs> is by 28th february and the approval of proposal by 28th march that would have received by you till now and by now and the submission of the project report is to be done by 30th june or 30th november again according to the two cycles i would like to mention here that there is no viva voice for the mlis again uh, some important uh, points for the submission because we find that this is done not properly the proposal has to be submitted to the program coordinator uh, ignu medangadi both for pgd lan as well as mlis whereas for the report for pgd lan one copy each has to be submitted at the tele learning center or the study center as as well as sre division ignu medangadi whereas for mlis it has to be submitted only at the sre division medangadi so these were some of the important points of our uh, of our project uh, uh, we still have 2 3 minutes to go i would like to say again here some of the important points of our project and this is that it is uh, for the benefit of our learners that we have this project so please don't take it as a uh, problem uh, you please utilize this as a uh, platform to present what you have learned into a practical shape you try to present it you try to uh, see that uh, you are able to utilize maximum of your learning here and uh, present a project according to your liking and your competence and for that you have to take care that you uh, while presenting you while choosing a topic you choose a topic that is an area of interest to you and it is only that which gives you a chance to work well Pre maintain a proper liaison with your guide and try to have a feedback from point to point uh, time to time from him so uh, that will be uh, giving a better shape to your project don't uh, go to the guide at the last moment only our email addresses are all with you uh, whenever you need some uh, guidance from any of the faculty members you are uh, free to ask us also i think mr sevkan would like to share some of his thoughts yes, regarding the project as we have already mentioned about the proposals which we are rejecting for some of the reasons like title is not clear and objectives are not clear these things we are rejecting the proposals and sending back to the students yes and they are reframing the uh, proposal yes sending it still we are finding some problems there which cannot be approved again so basically this is one year program how is it possible if they take long time to submit the proposal to get it approved see this how will they complete what is the mechanism to sort out these kind of problems can you please explain i think uh, as we have mentioned earlier while uh, during our induction that you can complete it in four years or uh, both the things and uh, while uh, if your topic is rejected or asked for modification please don't worry it will be done twice a year as we have mentioned right now and you always have a chance to improve <coughs> upon and do it but one thing again here that is of uh, importance is that while you are submitting your revised proposal please send the one that we had sent to you as comments earlier because that gives us a chance to know what was asked and expected of you so that is also important that you please take care of otherwise 
there is uh, please don't panic uh, that uh, you have been asked for improvements and all and because uh, you don't have that much of time to devote you can always finish in the next cycle there is no harm it is always better to do it better than doing it uh, in a very average way or fashion i think i have answered what you expected me yes, sir. and uh, thank you very much for okay. thank you so much